Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Chris here. So in today's video, I thought we'd take another look at programming drums, step it up a bit, a bit more advanced techniques and see where it gets us. Let's go. So we're back, it's a very cozy kind of day. So cozy that I'm still wearing my slacks from this morning. I thought we'd all be comfy together. But aside from that, let's continue from where we left off last time. Also, if you haven't seen how to program drums, I've done an introductory video here. You can click on it and uh, check that out if you haven't seen that already. If it's too basic for you, you can stick along for this stuff. But let's dive in. So last time, headphone check. All right, so last time, we were here. This is kind of what we made. Well, it's not kind of, this is what we made. So that's pretty much where we left it off last time. So today I figured go a bit deeper into it, add a few more layers and actually get involved some processing adding some plugins some compression and seeing how we can really spice up this drum groove that we've got so let's dive in also just a quick one the weather is quite wild today we've got clouds we've got sun so this whole shot is gonna be getting bright dark it is what it is you know the elements you can't can't do anything about it but let's quickly dive into what we've got so the first thing i want to show off for this Last time I was getting pretty deep on the hi-hats. We've got a little bit of groove going on here that we've basically copied our hi-hats over. And you can hear there's a little bit of swing that's coming from this where we've just nudged over the hi-hats, these bottom ones, slightly to the right, 20 milliseconds to be precise. And it's given us a bit of groove. But one thing I really like to add to my hi-hat programs, I guess, is if you group them, We'll call this hat. You can even stick the open hat in there, but we'll see if we're going to keep it. So we've got this in our hats. All right, so we've got that. One thing I really like to do is sidechain the hats to the kick. If you don't know what sidechain is, it's basically where you get a compressor, and normally a compressor reacts off the sound that you put the compressor on, in this case, the hi-hats. So you can see it's coming in there, but if I sidechain it, I can put in a kick, now this compressor will only compress the hi-hats every time the kick hits. Oh, there goes the sun. <laughs> so uh, every time the kick hits, we're going to get a little dip in this compression. So it will sound something like this. I'll solo the hats and the kick. An extreme example of that would be like this. I feel like as normal drummers, when they're playing, they tend to be very dynamic with their hi-hat playing. And to me, every time the kick hits, it just ducks the hat slightly. It almost feels a bit more natural. Obviously, this is the taste. It might work on some styles, might not work on the other. But personally, I do really enjoy using it in the styles of music that I make. So let's hear it in context. This is without it. And even those open hi-hats, it kind of crushes them a bit underneath the kick. I really like that, and, and I think it, it really helps with the groove as well. It gives it a bit more grooviness and makes the beat feel a lot more tied together. So that's step number one. Next thing I'd like to do is actually, if I minimize all of this, I'm going to put all of these drums in a group. We could call this drums. We haven't done much processing, so what I really like about Ableton is they've got this drum bus plugin, and... As it says on the tin, it works amazingly on drums, as well as other stuff, but let's hear it on drums. Fantastic, it's a lot more crunchy, a little bit driven, compressed, all of this stuff, and we haven't even touched the plugin. This is the default how it opens up. So let's dive in and process it a little bit more just from here. Out. 
adding a real nice bit of crunch, compression, and I haven't even actually used the, the main compressor on here. I find it's quite aggressive. Let's hear what it sounds like. Nice. So that's using it on 100% wet. We can obviously pull this back and have the effect be a bit less in your face. And for me, 44% sounds about good, you know, sounds uh, like it's not going too crazy. Tying our drums a lot more together, adding a lot more heft to the sound, which is awesome. So the next thing I want to do is actually add a couple more things in with some percussive items, maybe even the hi-hats. I'd love to add like a rolling hi-hat, but before this, we were working all with audio. So I'd like to chuck some MIDI in there. So we've got this MIDI channel. I'm going to call it hats three on brand let's find a sample quite like this 606 so let's chuck that in here if i get the midi on my keyboard obviously i've got a keyboard down here but for the sake of this i'm just going to use my computer nice and I'd love to do some, some rolls, so some hi-hat rolls. Let's quickly add some in. So as you can see here, we've got our keyboard. I'm just gonna plop some in like that. And it's already sounding really nice. And what's cool about using MIDI as opposed to audio is you can be a lot more free with velocity and shifting the notes and you know even picking different pitch and stuff like that's easy and visual. So what we're gonna do is do a bit of all of that. So. I mean, just on its own, it really adds a nice groove, especially because we've got the, the groove on that second hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select every other note, pull those down in velocity. I'm just holding command, clicking down. Nice. And one special thing that you can do is obviously you can see I can zoom in and the grid isn't really dividing. I can press command one, two and three and it will make the grid smaller and if I press command three it will turn it into a triplet grid but what I want to do is keep it on just a standard grid I'm gonna select these five notes I'm gonna there's this little arrow that pops up here if I click that and drag it into two we've now kind of shrunk these notes if I get rid of that first one now we've put that into double the time right so we've divided it in half and that's a nice way to get a quick roll. Obviously, there are other ways you can do this. You can just click and copy in the notes manually. I quite like this method because you can get a bunch of notes and squeeze them into a smaller section. So if I just mute these first four notes, maybe these three. And it's quite like a nice little way to add a slight bit of movement to those hats. And obviously, I don't have to have it every time. I could have it every uh, four bars or however much. And it's just a nice little fill leading it to the next section. And maybe there I might even decide to take it out. And then bring it back in for the rest of the bars. So again, you know, just trying to be a bit more creative with my programming. And again, part of the way that I look at this is like a macro micro style. So in the sense if this is your loop, right, you've got these four bars, that's your loop. This is kind of how I look at it micro. You're looking at it as at the smallest level where these are your, your initial pattern. And then macro, I look at it like this. So this is my whole thing. Do I need this here? Do I need that there, you know? And you can be selective over a larger scale as opposed to being selective over a smaller scale like do i want that hi-hat there do i want to get rid of it you know so with that in mind i can see looking at this as a macro that um i've got this pattern repeating throughout the whole thing do i want that do i maybe want to be more limited with it and say every other one or in between i could do the inverse you know 
And like that, it just keeps, you can look at, at your whole kind of program as a picture and see, is it repeating too much? Do I need something interesting to come in here? Change it up, whatever. With that said, I might leave those, but I might just only use the first half of those other two because I quite like the little quick roll. And another beautiful part about using MIDI to do drum programming is the fact that I've got this simpler that I'm using to play out all of these samples is if I go into controls, get some nice little features like this one called random pan. I really like using it. If I stick it to 100, solo this. Now it's not just doing like left, right, left, right. It's, it's being very randomly selective of where it's panning. It's not necessarily hard left and hard right. Sometimes it might be 20% or 30 minus 30% or whatever. So you get a really interesting amount of randomization. Very cool. And obviously you can pull that back and it'll be a lot more subtle. Which is cool. I quite like that 38%. It's not too crazy. And obviously I've got some envelope controls. I've got transposing if I want to transpose the whole thing. I've got the filter. You've got a real lot of options when you're using Simpler to program some of your drums. But it depends on, you know, how you feel about programming. If this is a better way to visualize it and you can go in and change it, go for it. Whatever works. Something I quite like to add when I'm programming drums is obviously the use of loops. Now I try to stay away from like the full drum loop where you got the, all the layers, kick, snare, all of that stuff together because I quite like the freedom of having the separate samples. You know, in, in there are some fancy ways to go in and do that, but I would rather just start from the beginning and, you know, pick my samples accordingly. And then if I need a loop, say it was percussive or a drum break or something, then I would utilize it as that. So with that said, I'm going to add a drum break because it's, again, something I really enjoy adding to my programs, my drum programs. Here we go, got a break. Now, I don't know how this is going to fit with the, with the tune that we've got, but let's give it a listen. Quite nice, there's a couple extra hits going on in there that make it a bit distracting, but I can definitely utilize some of it. I mean, one thing I can do in particular is just add an EQ to this drum break, and obviously that kick is clashing with the other kick we've got, so if I go in and just scoop out some of that low end, Obviously the kick is still in there, but at least now when it blends with the other kick, it's not going to clash as much. As opposed to... Now all of that low end space is saved up for the kick that I've chucked in there. Now some people might go in and actually pull out the... Uh, the bits where the kick hits or if there's a sample overlapping that they don't want they might just go and pull it out like that and it will sound cleaner for sure but then that depends if it's what you're looking for so something like this for example personally i would rather just keep it the full thing just sounds like a nice layer and then if we add all of our stems And I quite like that fill. Let me see. Because the hats in there make it a bit clashy. Oh, with the fill going into that kick. Lovely. So I can take that. Awesome. And then that could be my loop that I'm using throughout this, this thing. And voila. We've got that drum break implemented into our beat. Adds a nice little bit of a layer in there. And as well, don't feel afraid to pitch shift your drum. Sometimes if you're dealing with like a kick or a drum break or even hi-hats, it can be quite convenient to be able to shift the pitch. And sometimes they might blend a bit better 
or even in the use of a kick. Some people say that you might want to tune your kick to the key of the song. I don't really do that myself. I, I would rather just find the sample that I thought fit. But if that's you, enjoy it. And if you haven't tried it, try it out, see what happens. But let me pitch shift the, this break and see how that sounds. Like now a lot more of the smaller delicate parts of the break come through in the beat, which I quite like. Mm. And then when you hear it with everything. And actually, because I noticed I had my break in the hi-hat folder, it was being compressed by that kick, similar to the hi-hats. And at first I was like, maybe that's not right, but Listening back to it, it actually sounds quite nice. But what I would do instead of processing all those together is I'll just have it on its own. We can just copy the compressor from there, slap it on the break. Nice, feels a lot more uniform. Awesome. So that's looking pretty solid so far. I might just add a little percussion loop as part of those breaks actually got some percussion loops. So let's see what we have. Oh, this is nice. Let's see if I chuck that in how it sounds. Lovely, and don't forget to uh, include your your breaks in there. Your like your pauses. Super important, I find. Like those those gaps for me make a world of a difference to the excitement and impact of your drums. I mean, here I cut it out for that gap, but I might just leave it. Awesome. But really cool, I might just get this loop and do what I did with the hi-hats. If I go into the warp, change this to just a single um, loop forward mode. I pull that back. Makes it a lot tighter. Awesome, let's hear that. So I'd keep that the same. Call this perk loop. Maybe keep it the same color as those. Lovely. So our beats really stepping up, you know, it's a, it's a little bit further from where we started, sounding a lot more punchy. I mean, one more thing I could add to the actual processing of this is if I go and grab the glue compressor, boom. I really like this one in particular based off an SSL G bus style compressor. You can look up what that means, but basically it's going to give us a nice bit of control on our drums, keep the ratio light, and let's see what it sounds like. So I'm testing out a couple of things here. At first I was just going for kind of a light overall compression, but I've pulled the threshold way down and you can hear it providing loads of slap to this beat. At the same time, it's definitely over compressing it loads. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to blend in with this dry wet, a bit of that original uncompressed sound and feed in some of the very compressed sound just to give it a bit more life. So let's see what that sounds like. So we'll start on compressed and then feed it in. Awesome. 
awesome. A little bit of parallel compression and sounds great. Sounds really nice. If I was doing this external from using the stock Ableton plugins, I would probably stick something like standard clip on the end of this just to keep all of those insane transients down. And what this does is literally just clips the peaks of all of the hardest hitting stuff. So let's hear what that sounds like. So you can see just on this graph how much louder my snare is than the kick. That could also well be because I'm <laughs> listening on headphones, but I'm gonna pull that snare down a bit. Pulling it down minus 6 dB is about half of the original sound, more or less. So with that in mind, pulled it down about six. And it's still way up there, but at least it's a lot more together. And like that, I can pull this a bit up. And this is great because what I like is the fact that you can now have your drums be perceived as a lot louder. So if I pull this up, they're hitting about minus, minus six. And if I take this off, you can see only the peak is hitting minus six as opposed to with it on, the whole beat is roughly there. So we're getting a bit more loudness. We're not blowing out our meters and clipping everything held together very well by this clipper. You could say we're using it as a limiter, but it's actually physically snapping off those transients. So it's adding definitely that impact that I like, keeping everything safe at the same time. If you want to know a bit more about the standard clip, I did a video explaining it. It's a pretty complex tool, but it can be very convenient when used correctly. Okay, and for the last thing I want to add to this beat, it's actually something that isn't necessarily beat drums related, but I'm just going to add a bit of ambience. And what I mean is I have a couple of things saved in here. Maestral Park in Malta, for example just a recording of the environment or let's see Weymouth Sea these are just some voice memos on my phone basically but I find that they add a real nice bit of just ear candy you know I love that so let me add in I, I mean this Weymouth Sea is <laughs> in most of the songs I make so I'll just cut off the end because this a little bit of talking from when I was with my friends. But we can just do this, add a little fade, and then just stick this underneath the whole song. And actually, if I loop this, oh, it's warped it. That's cool. I forgot Ableton now just uh, warps long pieces of audio, which is cool, but I don't actually need it to be warped. So I'll leave it as is. You can actually unwarp it. Oh, look at that. And loop it. Add a little fade, beautiful, and we just need to turn it down so you can barely hear it. Lovely, I pulled down that crash a bit because it's quite absurdly loud. Awesome, and then maybe I might just get those hi-hats, those one and two that we programmed earlier and just pan them slightly to the left, actually add a bit of stereo information to this beat. I find that most drums nowadays are very mono, you get that kick, snare, 
hats, everything in the middle. And sometimes it's just nice to have a bit of width. You know, when you record the drum kit, you've got cymbals, you've got the hats, you've got the toms. Ooh, getting too excited. But, you know, everything lives like this. It doesn't live like this. So with that in mind, I like to give my drums a little bit of stereo information, whether that's panning this percussion to the side slightly. Awesome. Really dig that. And yeah, just adds a little bit of stereo information. I think I'm going to stop there for now. Maybe we'll do one more to really top off this collection of programming drums, but I think this is probably enough for today. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to leave us a comment below letting us know what you thought and feel free to like and subscribe. The support really helps the channel. And thank you to the people who have already done so. I really appreciate that. And once again, I've been Chris Vella and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Oh,